Hello and welcome everybody and how are we all doing today? It is another Sunday night live stream and I hope you are ready and raring to go. Today we're going to be talking about root vegetables, something that I absolutely love to grow and it's quite a wide range of different vegetables so get ready to have that chat. So, first of all, let's see if we've actually got anybody in and straight away. Turbo Stream is out there saying good evening, Veg Podcasters. Good evening to you. We have got, when it comes up, any second now, there we go. Adrian, good evening, Richard and all. Good evening to you. Kate is there saying good evening, Veg Army. Good evening to you. We've got Idaho Garden Girl. Hi, the like on the way. Hit the like on the way in. Hello, Richard, Tybo, Stream, and Adrian. Indeed, please do hit that like button. Uh, who else have we got? Hargrave Gas is out there. Evening all. Hope you've had a good week. Horrible weather here in Suffolk. It's been no better here in Sussex, let me tell you that. We'll get into that in just a moment, though. Uh, we have got, uh, what else have we got? Digwell is out there saying good evening all, except IGG, good evening, Idaho, Gar good afternoon, Idaho Garden Girl, of course. Uh, yeah, of course, I say evening here, but it could be any time, wherever you are. We've got Anna Jones saying evening, Gardeners, good evening to you. I believe tonight's subject was one that, that you requested, if I remember correctly. So uh, hopefully you're going to fire us lots of questions to help this conversation flow. Scott is out there saying good evening all, good evening to you. I'm getting a flickering. I don't know if anybody else is getting a weird flickering, but I'm getting a flickering going on. Uh, good evening to you, Scott. Did you get my email, by the way? Uh, Nicola is out there saying good evening, Richard and Veg Army. Managed to start planting up some tubs with shrubs, spring bulbs, hellebores, premiers and pansies. Loads more to do. Excellent stuff. Uh, Rachel Tyser saying, hello, it's Steve in disguise. Hello, Steve. Hope you are well. Lovely to see you. Uh, we have got Philly SPB saying, hello, everyone. Good evening to you. Uh, Benny Cillian is out there saying, hello, everyone. Good evening to you. Uh, my dad is out there. Excuse me, saying good evening, growers. Good evening to you. Jenny is out there saying, hi, guys. I can't stop our family over. Hope you are well and catch up ASAP. Have a great week. Lovely to see you for your fleeting visit, Jenny. Um, I, I hear there is some great news on the horizon for you. Uh, who else have we got? Uh, a lot mental is out there. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Chinny Kate is there. Hello, everyone. I managed a nice few hours on the allotment yesterday. It was very windy. Lucky you. Lucky you indeed. Uh, Digwell and Anna Jones both say there's no flickering there. Excellent. Excellent. It might just be me switching buttons. It could be the, the software thing I'm using. Anyway, how are we all doing? Hope you are well. Hope you've had a great week. It's certainly been challenging with the weather to try and get anything done at the moment, isn't it? But um, we make the most of it. We make the most of it. Now, let's get into root vegetables. Now, as I said, I think it was Anna that suggested this particular topic. By the way, please do keep adding your comments. If you've got any questions or anything you want to add, please do feel free. Most of you know that by now, but there's always a chance there may be somebody new who wants to join in the conversation. We don't bite. And if you're watching after the event, please feel free to add comments as well. So root vegetables. Now, where I thought I would start with this sort of question is uh, if you tell me what particular root vegetables you particularly like to grow. For me, it's it, root vegetables covered su a, such a wide range of different uh, uh, vegetables, and many of them are staples. Um, so by that, I mean potatoes. That's a root vegetable, one that is a staple. We all grow that, or well, pretty much most of us grow that. We've got carrots, of course, which, again, I would class as a staple. It's something that we have to grow. We also have things such as turnips, which I'm not too keen on turnips, but that might be different for you. We have onions, of course, and onions are something I try and grow lots and lots of. So, um, yeah, lots and lots of different ideas out there 
for uh, for root vegetables. But let us know what you are growing out there. Uh, so we have got uh, Bethan has joined. Evening all. Good evening to you, Bethan. Hope you are well. Digwell says best image and audio for months. You know what? I have made a few adjustments. I've been looking into things. To me, it still looks, when I look on, on my face, still looks a little bit over exposed but i'm working on it i've been changing a few things up but that's probably why we're getting the best image and can internet connection i'm hoping it's going to stay uh we have got amanda in the facebook group anybody who's watching in the facebook group i may not see your name so if you just let me know who you are at the end with uh, how amanda's done it. it's here amanda says evening all thanks richard for the seed parcel this week love the newsletter format it's wonderful amanda um thank you i i thought i'll change things up it's more a, a magazine lit now with the this is for members of the supporters club uh, i send out a newsletter each month but i've changed it up to make it a bit more interesting a bit more bit well trying to fit all the information on it because on the pace of a4 it was getting a little bit tricky um but yeah we, we swapped things up and it's looking good we're getting a lot of good feedback about it so pleased that you are like it uh scott only just saw the email sounds good to me fantastic we will sort that out at some point uh turbo stream says i've not been to my plot in over a week it's either frozen solid or saturated with rain i know this is actually something that i think a lot of us are having problems with and i think this is something i might try suggest as a subject for next week it is difficult to get to the plot my allotment i'm certainly not able to get to my allotment anywhere near as much as usual but we hopefully hopefully i keep saying hopefully december is going to bring better weather but hopefully january might hopefully weather will get better for the rest of the term i don't know it's just annoying uh, the only time i seem to have spare now is the uh, weekends for gardening but say i might go into that next week when uh we'll see what i'll, I'll come up with that a little bit later on and uh, rebecca has joined and said good evening all hope all is well with you hope you are well too rebecca i know you've been struggling a bit with motivation i saw your instagram uh post the other day hope you are starting to get inspired again uh nicholas says carrots and parsnip uh yeah two of the root vegetables that uh we could grow carrots and parsnip are obviously a staple i didn't mention parsnips actually parsnips are one that uh, i know a lot of people struggle with and i think that's something that we would like to get lots of tips with uh, idaho says parrot uh, parrots potatoes carrots parsnips and beets meaning beetroot of course uh some good root crops there uh jerusalem artichokes are there another good root crop uh, yeah, I guess that would be a root crop. Uh, Bethan says I grow potatoes, beetroot, carrots, parsnips, and celeriac. Another good one, actually, celeriac. Uh, then we have Anna says carrots, spuds, fennel, parsnips. Just can't grow celeriac. Won't expand at the base. So there we go. That's one of the problems I'm hoping somebody might be able to suggest as to why, uh, why Anna's celeriac doesn't expand at the base it might, might be uh, a few ideas there turbo stream says my roots are usually parsnips and beetroots carrots taste like soap to me for some reason Tur turnips definitely not on my list it's awful um yeah i'm not a lover of turnips i think i said at the beginning turnips for me are a little i don't know just don't like the taste of them i find them a bit bland um, but kohlrabi, for example, another root crop similar to turnips, I find a bit more interesting. Uh, I want to grow celeriac. Maybe I will get that done in 2024. Well, hopefully somebody's going to throw some celeriac growing tips out there. Uh, Kate says, carrots for me, rainbow and ox heart was very successful this year for me. I've actually grown some rainbow carrots myself as well in a in a in a tub and they're still they've still got plenty of green foliage on them they're outside they're not doing anything special and they still seem to be very very 
successful with these rainbow carrots. So I'm very excited. We're going to be eating some of those on Christmas Day at this rate. Uh, Turbid Stream says, onions minus the leaf miner, hopefully, fingers crossed. I think we were talking about leaf miner a bit last week, weren't we, if I remember correctly. Um, Scott says, salsify, I want to try and to grow pretty flowers as well. Salsify. That, I know quite a few people got into salsify a few years ago when it came free from a magazine, but um, I, I, I wasn't convinced with it. I, I, I'm going to try it again. Now. I will try it again, actually. Let's make a note of that. Uh, Nicholas says, container and raised garden, raised garden, make garden a little easier. And I've a lean to by my shed to be a wood store in the future so I can do work undercover. Indeed, talking about this weather and how bad it's been. Now, Digwell says, normally a lack of water stops celeriac from bulking up. I think that's the same with most vegetables, isn't it? If they don't get enough water, they tend to stay um, small. Um, and it's a fine balance getting the water in just right. If you give them too much water, uh, they end up flooding and rotting. So you've just got to get that balance just right. Uh, Chili Kate says, I always considered swede to be a root vegetables, but I know that it's that's a brassica. So that swede is, in fact, a root vegetable. And this is where we're crossing the line between many different varieties because brassicas, root vegetables can be a brassica as well. There's um, kohlrabi, turnips, radish and uh, swede, all of which are brassicas, but also root vegetables. So. You know, it covers quite a wide range of things. Uh, Rebecca says, yes, I've been trying to get out a lot more and have had some fantastic news. I've finally been expected to put my name down for a plot. I've got three people in front of me, but excited to be on the list. Fantastic, Rebecca. <laughs> fantastic. I know Rebecca's been trying to get an allotment for a long time. I know Jenny's who had disappeared, but she's got herself an allotment as well. Uh, Idaho says salsify is the oyster plant. I don't think it is. I think it's a different thing, but salsify is meant to taste a bit like oysters or something. I could be wrong, but I think it is wrong. Uh, Graham Arnold has joined. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Bethan says, I found salsify tasted like a parsnip that hasn't sweetened with the frost. Uh, um yeah, I think if I remember correctly, Beth, that it was you, I was, and uh, Steve uh, Tysas who were talking about growing Celsify at the same time. So, yeah, if I remember correctly, that's right. Uh, Scott says some people say it tastes of oysters, talking about Celsify. Uh, Digress says the term root vegetable has now become anything that is in contact with the soil. It used to just mean roots. Yeah, it's getting a little tricky, isn't it? Trying to work out what is a what uh, when it comes to root, root vegetables. Um, that's, that's fab news. Rebecca, uh, Thomas Stream says, I forgot Swede. Always try a few of them. Uh, a lot of people basically saying that's awesome to Rebecca, which it completely is. Nigel has joined. Muddy Boots, hope you are well. I'm going to give you a phone call sometime this week if you are around. Uh, Anna Jones, more water than for any, everything else, would you say? Talking about um, celeriac. So, more water than. Yeah, um, I wouldn't say more water. I think it's making sure the ground is consistently moist, which is easier or harder than it sounds, I think. Okay? Making sure it is consistently moist. Uh, what else have we got? Digwell says, Salsify is known as the oyster plant or oyster vegetable. These giant pencils are members of the dandelion family, a Mediterranean plant with a delicate taste ever so sweet so my the oyster plant i thought was something completely different than salsify when i seen it growing at audley end house it didn't look anything like salsify and with oyster plant we're meant to eat the leaves uh, as opposed to the root so um yeah i um, i think they are two different things i could be wrong though i could be wrong or they might be called the same thing 
Uh, Beth then says, I haven't had much trouble with celeriac and I don't go out my way to water it more than any other crops. My beds are no dig and well draining, so the roots can get down and find their own water. So I think we've got a good idea of what root crops we are all growing. So I think we're talking about watering. And it seems like a good point because I always think that watering is one of those elements that is very difficult to get just right it takes experience and it's very difficult to try and explain to somebody how much water you should give your plants but when it comes to root vegetables as we know roots are in the ground so they tend to go on down into the ground they sit in that water and if they are in water for too long they can tend to rot but at the same time they want to suck in some of that moisture from the soil that surrounds it in order to help it grow now, I am on clay soil, which has a horrible tendency of sticking together, becoming very, very difficult for things like root crops to actually grow because it is just so hard and it holds on to water for so long. So what I've been learning um, when it comes to root crops is that one, no dig, as Beth mentioned, does work massively for me. So I've been building up the soil levels by adding plenty of compost all the time. And added to that, what I found when it comes to sowing, because root crops, I tend to sow directly where they are to grow carrots, parsnips particularly. Uh, most crops I will sow in my sowing station and, and plant them out at a later date. But I find with root crops, the less disturbance, the better they seem to do. But because of my clay soil, we get that capping effect, which prevents a lot of the seeds from breaking through. So again, with plenty of fresh compost on top, it does seem to work. Now, some people will actually say, particularly with carrots, adding fresh compost and sowing seeds, or digging in compost, I should say, it tends to lead carrots and parsnips to fork. But I think that comes from the old-fashioned way where you would dig in the compost and you get pockets of, of normal soil and pockets of compost, and that causes it to fork in different directions. So what I, what I find by making sure the soil is covered in compost it doesn't lead to forking but you do see when you, when the roots go down from the compost to the clay you can see a slight difference in the plant in the root itself uh, so let's go to the comments quickly oyster leaf mertinissa maritima is the herb where you eat the leaves that's what i was thinking of i'm going to give it a try of growing this year Steve, turnips, so quick and simple to grow in autumn, tasty when they are small, but a bit bitter when, when they are too large. You have to catch them just right. That's probably true, actually. Um, as same as kohlrabi and quite a few of the, the Nebraska family thinking about it. Um, Idaho says, ah, thank you for the clarification. Dig well. There we go. And Turbo Stream says, someone left a few lengths of guttering on the sharing bench. So I'm going to try covering my parsnip drill with them next year. So Turbo Stream, or Adrian as he's also known as, uh, has a lot of problems. And this is very, very common when it comes to parsnips and it comes to germinating of or germination of the parsnips. He struggles to be able to get them to germinate. And that's not uncommon. That's not uncommon at all. I certainly find with parsnip, it needs to be fresh seed. They say you can sow them from sort of March. I think March can be too cold. And middle to the end of April is about right for my parsnip seeds, I find. Um, and I, again, I scatter them onto the compost with my no dig method and cover them over. They do take weeks to germinate but once they germinate they will be in the ground for a long time so i'm going to throw that out there as well as a, a bit of a question for you guys how do you encourage your seeds or how do you have more success with sowing your seeds in order to get them to germinate particularly with parsnips uh steve says salsify i remember we did grow them two or three years back a lot of hassle in prepping them to cook and nothing special to eat i found so never growing them again interesting interesting um i do remember you growing them so i was always interested in what they were going to turn out like but a lot of hassle in preparing them to cook is that because they sort of very rooty lots of little spindly roots 
Uh, Turbo Stream says the aim to exclude light and keep the drill moist and protecting from heavy rain. Yes. Um, that's with the guttering over the parsnip seeds. So, yeah. Anybody got any tips on successful parsnip seeds? Digwell says, I had to scratch the compost on my agrarian plug trainers. The onion seedlings were stuck and not breaking through. Peat free seedling compost. Absolute rubbish, he says. This is the trouble, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I find this with my clay soil. It, it sort of it stops things from, from germinating because it just caps them over. And that seed has only got a small amount of energy in it to make it grow. And if you can't get through that capping and can't get those leaves out to start getting energy from the sun, it struggles. So, yeah. Um Bethan says, yes, I grew Salsify a few years ago. It was one in one of the magazines as a free seed. I wasn't very taken with it either. It goes brown very quickly once peeled, so pop lemon juice on it. There we go. So um, interesting stuff. And Scott, who's, who started this Salsify conversation, I've seen people chit parsnip seeds. That's, that's definitely an option. Uh, but, yeah, the Salsify, I think, as Scott is a chef, Salsify might actually be uh, – right up his street um be interested to see what you do with it of course steve says parsnip seeds i have germinated on moist tissue paper and plant them out as soon as they start sowing now as i'm i'm thinking through this because i i've never done this myself i direct sow particularly parsnip seeds uh directly into the ground but um as, as I'm talking to you, I'm sort of thinking of ways that I could try and and be a bit more, um, be more successful with my seed sowing for carrots and parsnips. I think we've only got two parsnips for Christmas dinner this year that we've grown. And I'm wondering if we could, as Steve says, and somebody else mentioned earlier, start them off. There was that flicker again. Uh, start them off in a tray on moist tissue paper just to see um, if we can get them to chit. And then probably pop them into, as Stuart Jackson likes, his paper uh, paper pots to plant in the ground once they are growing. That's, that's a way around it. It's a bit more work, but I think that might work. So you, what I mean is you literally chit your seeds. Once you see them chit, once you see them start to spring into life, we then take those chitted seeds and pop them into... Uh, paper pots of compost and get them to grow on before we plant them out. That might be a way around it. Toby Stream says, I tried one year with planks of wood. I usually make a drill, water the drill, cover the seed. My friend told me to sow very thickly and it usually works. This year the drill dried out too fast. If I remember correctly, the spring was quite a dry spring and then followed by a wet winter. But yeah, um, Interesting, because I've heard this method. So what Turbo Stream is alluding to there, you make a drill, you sow your seeds, you cover it over with a piece of wood, and that's meant to help germinate seeds. I've heard a lot of people do it. It doesn't always work. And sowing thickly as well is something that I find works a lot too, especially with carrot seeds on this uh, hard compost uh, clay soil that I've got. Graham says, sown parsnips second week of May for the last five years. Excellent germination every time. Gladiator is the variety. I do think that's a lot of problem with parsnips is that they say they can sow in March. But I think really, unless you warm the soil up, the soil is too cold. There's an old wives tale that says when it comes to parsnip seeds is the soil is warm enough is when you can sit on the soil without any uh, clothes on and your your bottom doesn't get cold. That. Don't go and do that, of course, but that, I believe, is the old wives' tale of working out when it is ready. Uh, Steve says, sell Sophie, prepping to cook. They change the colour quickly, this appointment. And, yeah, um, Digwell also says, sell Sophie is off my lip. Nothing left when peeled. So, a few thoughts on that. My best luck with parsnip is letting some go to seed and let them redo themselves. However, first getting parsnip crop going, I germinated on damp paper towel in a plastic box. Interesting. I've been thinking of doing that, of just letting parsnip go to seed on my allotment and seeing what we get out of it. I, I still probably will do that, to be honest. Muddy Roots says parsnips, deep conical hold 
hole filled with fine sieved compost. Use a plastic collar on top of each station, four to five seeds per station. I cover all mine with insect mesh to protect while germinating. There we go. So what um there was that flicker again. Where's that coming from? I wonder. What what uh Digwell's alluding to, I've seen people doing this. They get a dibber, dib into the ground to make a hole and fill that up with some really fine sieve compost. And in fact, I've seen people who actually harvest their parsnips and they compare the parsnip that they've harvested to their dibber. And you can literally see the same shape on the two. Uh Steve says, also growing parsnip seeds in toilet roll tubes undercover and planted them out once a couple of leaves showed. Did it work? Did it work? Digwell says, I chip my parsnip seeds, especially ones over a year old. Or as Nigel says, just so four or five in each hole. There we go. I know parsnips is one of those that a lot of people have a lot of trouble trying to get to germinate. Um for a wide variety of reasons. Steve planted out the whole tube so not to disturb the root, which at every which even at that stage was very long. Talking about the paper pots there and the toilet roll tubes. Bethan says, I chip my parsnip seeds as Steve does. I do find it better that way. I still sow at least two chitted seeds per station. They can still be problematic. There we go. So a lot of people saying that chitin seeds, parsnip seeds, seems to work. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I would need a jackhammer to drill a decent hole into my heavy clay, Nigel. Well, what you could do, and I think this is what Nigel, uh, or a few people as well do, is get some large containers. I believe Nigel uses uh, water containers that you might have up in your loft. Uh, and fill fill those up with decent compost. Or is it sand some people grow in as well? And then use that for growing things like that in if you are on a heavy clay. Basically a giant raised bed. Uh, the veggie pod work I found worked quite well as well for growing uh, 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 parsnips and, and root crops. Toby Stream says, this last winter, my friend was alive. He said, you certainly know how to grow parsnips. Um it does take a it does take a bit of it does take a lot to learn to get right. I think. Uh, Chili Kate says we did the toilet roll trick last year mainly because when we got the allotment works well, maybe a bit small, but that's probably because they went in a bit late. Um, yeah, I mean, it is it is tricky. Like I said, I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna. Parsnip experiment. I'm going to make a note of that because I'm going to try different ways in 2024 to grow parsnips uh, to see what we get the best germination rate. As I said, normally I sow them directly in the ground. But talking, talking this through, I want to see how we get the best success with. So it's something to look forward to for 2024. Nigel says, I've got bigger tanks now, the type builders use for mixing compo. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I've seen the bigger tanks. I was meaning, I was trying to make it easy to explain or for everyone to understand. But, you know, the idea is big plastic containers that you can just fill with decent compost or uh, I, I think the competition grows. They used to take those blue... Uh, I can't think what they're called. Those blue tanks I used to use, or a lot of people use for water, rainwater harvesting. Those blue tanks, and was it sand they used in those? I'm sure it was sand they would use in those as well. Um, I don't know why. I'm, I'm only going on what I've seen. Uh, Digwell says you just get organic stuff on top of a clay. The worms will do the work, and you will have very friable soil in a year. Totally agree with that. Totally agree with that to a point. It does take a bit longer than a year, um, but clay soil is. Uh, I, I know clay soil is a problem. It does get better. It's taken years, but it does get better. I think the key to germinate parsnips in open ground is to keep the drill moist till I germinate. I think that's the same with all root crops. Uh, and Chili Kate says, looking forward to see how our parsnips are this year. They look massive from above. We will find out on Christmas Eve. Chili, don't forget to send us a photo for that. I'm, I'm exactly the same boat. We've got plenty of crops 
um, in a ground. And like my parsnips, I know we've got two parsnips. So I'm, I'm refusing to harvest those until I know, uh, until Christmas Eve. And then we'll see what we got. Got a plenty of bu bu Brussels sprouts and things. Uh, um, so my organic stuff. Oh, yeah, talking about that. Uh, my, Nigel says, blue barrels filled with coarse sand competition, guys. Core out with drain pipe, then fill with fine compost. Yes. Yeah, there we go. I knew I was thinking about something along those lines. Right. Um, so... Let's go to a video. Now, uh, what video should we do? Let's do the challenge video because it's uh, a bit of a long one, but it was a bit of fun. Now, you, I said I was going into a garden centre and I went into there yesterday evening <coughs> and um, I was there for a reason, but you set me a few challenges. Let's go see how we get on. Right, guys, I am inside a garden centre in December. You guys sent me a bit of a challenge this week to find a few things inside this garden centre. Um, there you go. Christmas trees are a go. So, first thing that we want to check is to find a bargain corner plant for under a pound to take home and try and bring back to life. So, I've seen bargain corner right here. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Anything that we can be interested. It's not a huge amount of light here. Uh, but you know what I can see? 20p for those. Let's bring these into the light. We're going to get those. That looks good. Uh, what else have we got? So. Let me bring the camera around. So the next part of this challenge you guys set was um, to find a non-gardening Christmas gift inside a garden centre. So here we go. Lots of stuff going on. Lots of stuff going on. Let's have a look. Where should we go? This is a garden centre I used to come to as a child when I first started gardening. So. It's got quite a bit of a, a story here, just spotted. There's Hugh's book, there's Adam's book. Uh, what have we got up here? Christmas trees. Band is here somewhere. Uh, what else have we got? Anything? Oh, I like that. That raised garden bed for £35. That's not bad, is it? Not really. Not really a garden gift, is it? That, for £35, that's not bad. Um, this is normally where the clothes are, so I was hoping we'd get a hat here. Ah, here we go. Find find a hat for Amanda. Uh, not for Amanda, sorry. For Digwell. How's that? A garden hat. There we go. Oh, there's another one over here. Might be better. How's that one for a hat? There's plenty of options there going on, but uh, we've got more to find. Head on down here. A bit of a challenge, it has been difficult to find a gardening gift and a non gardening gift because, well, non gardening gift, there we go, throws. Kind of tell these up and things like that. But the real challenge um, has been to try and find a garden themed Christmas garden gift for sale, and I cannot see anything. We've got these things as well. Well, there we go. I don't think, I think that kind of goes to show that we can't find everything that we need. But we've got these 20 pea plants, so not all bad. Right, back to the studio. Yeah, I could not find any sort of, I mean, yeah, there was plants, there was garden items that you find all year round in a garden centre. But there was no real gardening gifts, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't know. 
grow your own Christmas tree set or something. There was nothing like that. It was really, really annoying. Um, what can I say? Lots of things that weren't garden, like throws and stuff. But anyway, we got the 20p uh, 20p bargain corner rescue, which is we brought home and got brought it in here tonight. But we've got it. And uh, what else did we do? And we found Digwell's hat. We found the garden themed, uh, the non gardening items that were set. But um, yeah, we failed on, on one of those. But mission sort of accomplished, I guess you could say. Skip thinking of a mission for next week. Uh, let's have a look at the comments. Digwell says, Bargain Corner looks better than some people's plots. I've got to admit, for Bargain Corner, there was some really good plants in that. Uh, but I went for, I thought, <coughs> excuse me, I find the cheapest possible item when I was there. And uh, as Kate says, 20p rescue. I thought that was great. Uh, Andrew Knight says, better to build your own raised bed than spend £35 on something made of plastic. They were made of steel, actually. Um, I, yeah, I've seen a lot of them around lately, and they seem to be quite popular. I'm, I'm intrigued as to how long the steel lasts. I prefer, I still, I've said before, I prefer wood, but um, I'm, I'm starting to think about steel a bit more. Uh, Digress says, uh, steel ones, Andrew says, steel. Now, that's a new one on me. Certainly better than plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Turbo Stream says, my cousin's local garden centre had three singing reindeers this year. Yeah. Um, I was actually there. I got a video. It might come out this week. It might come out next week of why I was there. Sort of garden related, but more a bit of fun. Um, if anybody knows, I don't think any of you would know Paul Bergard Garden Centre, but if you do, there's a a clue there as to what I was there for. Digwell says, all of my raised beds are made from coated steel, 15-year warranty. So for £35, that wasn't a bad deal. I was looking at it, and I'm still – I've got to do the sums now. I'm going to have to do the sums because I was building new beds, but that's got me thinking a little bit about it. £35, I didn't think that was too bad. Um Certainly something to think about, isn't it? Certainly something to think about. Has anybody been to a garden centre in these last few weeks with all the Christmas stuff going on? As you know, I normally avoid garden centres in December. I hate it because of all the things that are going on. And the fact that there's not the stuff that I want to see there um, really annoys me. Uh, I read that one. Turbo Stream says, I avoid most shops at Christmas, especially in garden centres. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I've done all my Christmas shopping in November. Um, so I'm feeling very pleased myself this year. Uh, Idaho is laughing at the singing reindeer. Uh, what, what else there? And Turbo Stream, I could send in the video next week if anyone, if none, anyone wants a laugh. Is that the singing, singing reindeer? Please do, as long as they're not singing anything that might get me a copyright strike. Should do, just, just be careful. Um, but please do, please do. Um, if I have to, I could always change the audio if need be. Uh, Thirty-five pound. If that was US dollars, it would be a bargain. So in US. Dollars? Would I be right in saying that's about fifty dollars? Um, I let me know. Let me know if I would be right with that. Right. Let's get back to the root vegetables. And I think, I think we've 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 spoken quite a bit about parsnips. But what about that good old staple, potatoes? Now I grow potatoes every year. Um, and I know Digwell, for example, he did a bit of a challenge this year, didn't he, of who can get the most potatoes out of one seed potato. I'm hoping he's going to do it again next year because I now I've got the idea for it. Uh, I'm going to try and do better. But it's also given me a few ideas of how we can try and buy less seed potato or make more money out of what we or not make more money sorry spend less money on potato so i planted a few of my extra potato seeds in some concrete blocks behind my greenhouse this year and i'm hoping 
to use those for seeds in 2024. Fingers crossed that's going to work. I've got to dig them up and see how they get on. Um, now, there may not be enough seed potatoes, but what I'm hoping to do is to cut the potatoes to try and get more plants out of them to make it worthwhile of growing more potatoes. I always plant my potatoes out on March the 20th or around then, St. Patrick's Day. I just do them all in one, get them in the ground, and that's it. Plenty of compost, plenty of fertilizer, leave them to grow and keep them moist at all times. Excuse me. Idaho says, yes, let's see the singing reindeer. reindeer. There we go. There we go. Uh, Muddy Boots says, local dobbies full of Christmas trees and lights. Poor Wade Rose looks lonely in the corner. Oh, honestly, who has been potting supermarkets inside garden centres? It's... It, I don't understand it. I don't understand it myself. I want to go to a garden centre for plants and for gardening stuff. Turbo Stream says, oh, I hadn't thought of the dreaded copyright. Probably not then. A lucky escape then. I, send it over anyway, Adrian. If you can send it as soon as possible, I might be able to do something with the audio instead. Um, I, I might be able to change it. Uh, I will send it and let Richard decide. What, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Muddy Boots says £35 is about $44. US dollars. I thought it might be around that figure. Uh, SSPC 2024, struggling finding a sponsor at present. Um, I'll send me a message. Send me a message and we'll see what we can do. Bethan says, I was in the garden centre today, funnily enough. I wanted a birthday present for my dad. I got him an outdoor light feature and some shallots for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't go into a garden centre and not come out with anything for you. Um, definitely something I've noticed, isn't it? I, I'd say I avoid garden centres in December usually. Uh, we'll send it over after the show. Thank you. Scott says, next year I want to grow more main crop potatoes. What's a good variety for jacket size spuds? There we go. Good question, actually. Good variety for jacket size spuds. Um, we'll throw that out there for main crop potatoes. What, what varieties of potatoes do you grow? For me, it's got to be home guard. I've got to grow my uh, Charlotte potatoes, Sarpo Myra full of light resistance, Marius Piper, but they don't necessarily always do too well. But there's a wide variety of different potatoes that I absolutely have to grow. Uh, Bethan says, I'll be back in the garden centre tomorrow as my daughter found a Christmas bauble she really liked, so I'll get it for Santa to put in her stocking. Good stuff, good stuff. Idaho says, thank you, Nigel. That must still be a good price. I buy three by six cedar beds for $59, cheapest price I could find. Yeah, Tammy, the price of wood at the moment is still really high. That's why I've been looking at metal beds, but um, so very high, very high. Turbo Stream says, I would try the potatoes in bags next year. The ones in the ground were very small. So small potatoes usually is due to lack of moisture. Um, so they don't like, they like lots of water, but they don't like sitting in water. Again, lots of moisture. That's usually why, but it could also be lack of feed. But um, We'll see what anybody else says. Hargraves Gas says Charlotte and nothing. So either, oh no, he's come down back here. Charlotte and Sarpo Myra for me. Digwell says Sarpo Myra tastes very bland to me. I have to agree. They're not the best tasting potato, but the blight resistance is why I grow them because I can guarantee I will always get, um, I can guarantee I always get potatoes by growing them or blight resistance are definitely one i'm having to do more because of blight bristol veggie bed says i don't like sarpo myra what other main crop tastes good good question for me maris piper is as one of my favorite as are king edwards but the trouble is you need so much room to grow a lot more potatoes don't we but um Again, I, I think taste can be very subjective, but we'll see what anybody else says, of course. 
for their favorite potatoes. It's very subjective, but it's also very open to what areas you are growing in as well. I believe that different compost, different soils and different ways of looking after it does affect taste too. Chili Kate says, I was in our local budget garden center yesterday. Was that in excess by any chance? I came out with Amaryllis and Monty's fault, cable ties, plant markers and a tin of biscuits. That's got to be in excess. It got to be in excess. Bethan says, I grew Cara this year and they have been a good size for jacket spuds. They roast well too. I do like potatoes that are malty, that have several uses. Uh, Billy Cillian says, Ramos, Sherman and Charlotte potatoes for me. Ramos, Sherman and Charlotte. I've not heard of Ramos. Uh, Ramos and Sherman, different varieties or they one of the same. Uh, not heard of those myself. So interesting. Hargrave says, don't disagree with comments on the taste of Sarfo, but have issues with blight with other varieties. Exactly right there. That's why I do them. Um, just to guarantee I get some roast potatoes on our Christmas table. Graham says, I found new potatoes do well in pots, but the main crops do better in the ground. I have to agree with you on that, actually. I definitely find that um, main crops do much, much better in the ground. Um, which is making me think that perhaps the first earlies next year should go in pots. Not sure, not sure. Chili Kate says, for potatoes next year, we grow Maris Piper, Java and Charlotte. A lot of people rave about Java, actually. It seems to be a very popular one. Uh, Digra says, everyone seems to complain about blight. Am I the only person that sprays against it? No blight for three years now. You know what, Digra? I think you are the only person that sprays against it. As... I'm sure you hear me say quite often, I don't like to spray anything on my <laughs> on my beds uh, as much as possible. I, I like what well, I like to spray in anything in general. I'd like to keep it as natural as possible. Um, and I know you are organic in the, and it was it JBA blight guard is organic. Um, I just still haven't got around to spraying. I'm going to have to try it one year. Let's pull it down. JBA blight guard. I try to make, try and make notes as we go through this show. Chili Gate says, yes, in excess. I spend way too much money in excess whenever I go in there. So for, for, I should explain. In excess is a chain of garden centres, sort of Hampshire, Dorset way. But they sell things very, very cheap. They tend to buy things that are overstocked, going out of date, et cetera, et cetera. And you can pick up some bargains. Um you really can, you really can pick up bargains if you are ever down this way. Turbo Stream says, I grew King Edward and probably won't again. They tasted okay, but got blight very early. So perhaps that's why they were small. More likely, yeah, more than likely, it is the blight that caused the problems. Uh, Steve says, Charlotte and Maris Piper are my two. Get me good sizes on Maris Piper for main crop. I normally choose the third variety, something new or different as a surprise. I think it's always good to experiment. Always good to experiment, certainly. Steve says, this year it was pink fur, which was an interesting potato and nice flavour. I've grown pink fur, uh, pink fur apple potato, which is always a weird name, I think, for a potato. Uh, I've grown those in the past. I've got to say, they're probably one of my favourite potatoes for taste is just they're so difficult to peel and everything because they're so knobbly and all over the place that was their only letdown but really really good flavor on those uh bethan's kitchen and garden says the other main crop i grew was desiree and they have been lovely for roasting and chipping but haven't tried them as jackets yet um Desiree, I think I've tried that in the past. It, it, I don't really eat jacket potatoes, but Amanda does like the odd jacket potatoes. So I'm going to be taking notes on these. Um, yeah. Uh, Money Boots says, I've just harvested my shallot, Charlotte's, Charlotte's Charlotte in buckets for almost nine months, just ready for Xmas. Uh, I think I've had this discussion before and I tried, and there was a time when, wasn't it, when we were all growing um first early potatoes in, in ready for christmas dinner and it was very successful it has to be said it was very successful 
I just like my roast potatoes on my Christmas table. And that's why I don't do it anymore, just because I like roast potatoes. New potatoes just didn't quite have the same appeal. But it's all good food at the end of the day. All good food. Uh, would you spray them with aspirin, says asks Anna Jones to Digrow. And Digrow replies, DBA, blight guard. I thought it was that. Uh, Bunny Silent says, Ramos for chips and roasting, Sherman for bacon and Charlotte for salad. I'm trying to, I generally try and grow about six different varieties of potatoes. Um, it's going to be a bit challenging next year because they're going into the smaller beds. Um, so I'm thinking I might grow the first earlies in somewhere else and then the second earlies and the main crops can grow in, in the beds. Uh, we'll have a think on that. We'll have a think on that. We've got plenty of time. Bethan says, I find all my potatoes do better in the ground than in pots. I think I will grow more of my carrots and beans in 30 litre pots next year and grow my potatoes in the ground. OK, OK. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't doubt uh, at all. I think potatoes always seem to grow better in the ground. Um, 30 litre pots and potatoes and ground. Good idea. Good idea for carrots and beans. Yeah, good idea. And it says, might try that. Lost all mine to blight this year. I, I got away with blight this year. First year, for as long as I can remember, we got away with blight. Even the tomatoes. Or did they? No, we got away with blight this year. Uh, the Amaryllis was not a bargain, but Monty featured them on Friday's Gardener's World, and I had to have a go. Yeah, I, I don't is Gardner's World still on? I thought they stopped during the winter. Um, just because I don't watch it. Well, I don't have a TV, so I can't watch it. Money Rich says, I've ordered a new main crop for next year. Sarpe Myra Cross Valor. Improved blight resistance and flavour. I'll look into that. Give that a try. Thomas Stream says, I do like jacket potatoes with crispy skin, with minced beef and onions on top. And that's exactly what my wife likes. I can't do it myself. Uh, Bethan says, I find Char Charlotte's a good all-round potato. I'd like Charlotte. She's a lovely, lovely potato. Um, International Kidney is another good one as well I try and grow. Otherwise known, if you're growing it in Jersey, that is, Jersey Royals. Um, really good potato. Uh, Brian's Garden Politano has joined. Hello all. Good evening to you. Um, right, let's go to the sew along video and then we'll come back and I've got another question I want to ask you. Uh, so this week it was set up or asked to, about the um chickpea. So let me show you what I'm doing with those. Right, well, this week you decided for me to grow or start the grow along sew along with some of our shooting chickpeas and. I've set this up so to grow shooting chickpeas all we really need is a jam jar like this. I've put the, the chickpea seeds already in the bottom. Um, I'll bring that in so hopefully it will focus so you can see. No. Uh, let's try this see if we can focus on it. Might do it better. Don't know. There you go. There we go. Uh, so I'll take that out of the way. So they're going to soak in water for 24 hours. Now, what I do, I take a, a piece of cloth, it's an old tea towel, see clean, place it over the top of the jam jar, and then with an elastic band that I've got around my wrist here, we just place that over the top, like so. And there we go. After 24 hours, we just turn it upside down to drain all the water out. The chickpeas stay in a jar. And then every, well, twice a day, we flush it with some fresh water. Just pour fresh water in there, give it a good shake, pour the water out and put it on the side. And within about a week, you should get some shoots that are edible. Uh, a bit like mung beans are another version that we can do exactly the same. Mung beans, of course, bean sprouts for Chinese meals. 
So, or champagne is probably where it's used in the most. Pretty easy to grow, to be honest, and can be grown indoors, which is very, very important at this time of year, along with our microgreens. The only important thing to remember, and I made this mistake, is make sure you clean the water out at least once a day, ideally twice a day. I forgot to do it for a couple of days and it ended up the water started becoming frothy and the chickpeas started to break down just because they were in water for too long. So very important to remember to do that. I've had to throw that batch away, but we'll make up for it with this lot. There we go, as easy as that, give it a try. Now you did set a challenge or to sow carrots. We're gonna do that next week and I will explain in the studio. Yes, so we are going to sow carrots in next week's sew along. I think it was Nicola who suggested carrots. Um, uh, the varieties that claim they can be sown in December. Uh, I found some that can be sown in January. So we're going to sow those next week. We'll probably sow them again in January just to see if they will actually grow and germinate. So something to look forward to for next week. Now, on that note, a couple of weeks ago, uh, you, we sowed some chili seeds and I put these in these trays. And if you look at the top, you can just start to see one that has germinated. In fact, there's a couple more in this picture, but you may not pick it up. But we'll picture in on, closely on that chili seed. As you can see, germinated, it is starting to reach for the sunlight. It is going to be growing quite well i hope it's going to be growing quite well it's now under grow lights where hopefully it's going to continue to grow and end up producing some early chilies fingers crossed fingers crossed in at all um right uh let's go back digwell says that jba blight guard works on tomatoes too we we'll have to i'm gonna i've made a note of it i'll have to give it a try and says, last summer, I forgot to order my usual potatoes and ended up buying sea potatoes from our local vegetable stand labelled red. They turned out great and cost next to nothing. Yes, yeah, some people do grow potatoes literally from what they can buy in a supermarket. It's something I've, I've never really done, but it's certainly one way to try and save some money, isn't it? Turbo Stream says, I had a few peas. I'd had gone girl too. Yum, yum, yum. Talking about the recipe he said earlier. Scott says, I was just about to ask what Jersey Royals were called in the seed catalogue, so we'll be growing them next year now. Yeah, they're only called Jersey Royals when you grow in Jersey. Here, they're generally international kidney, uh, as I understand it. Uh, Idaho, oh my gosh, that sounds great. Um, Scott says, my eight-year-old is really enjoying doing sprouting seeds with me at the moment. I was happy to see alfalfa seeds in the supporters park. Another one for us to try. Yeah, alfalfa. Um, uh, we got ours growing and uh, nice, delicious one. We've got another one coming out in January for microgreens as well. Um, then that'll probably be it for microgreens because we can actually start sowing some proper stuff in February. Uh, Idaho says, well, already germinated chili seed. Yep, yeah, already they are in heated propagators and under grow lights. So that means that we can get them a little bit earlier, get them growing strong and improving well. I find with chili, especially the hot chilies, they need that long growing season. Mm. Soon, I mean, this month we'll probably be sowing some more uh, uh, chili seeds and aubergine seeds as well, all of which... I find need that very long growing season. In fact, last year we sowed some aubergine seeds in December and they have, and we've had our best year for aubergines, if I'm honest with you. Um, so what I want to ask next is what carrot seeds do you like to grow and why? Um, um, what problems do you get with carrots particularly? I know root fly can be a bit of a problem. Again, this is, I get very prob very few problems with pests, very few problems. So I'm not the person to ask about how we tackle pests. My answer would be encourage nature in. Uh, but I know root fly can be a bit of a problem for many people. I believe environment is the key. But for me, I like I like a nice carrot. I do like a nice carrot. We've still got plenty of carrots growing in our garden, uh, all of which are doing well. And we're going to be harvesting quite a few for Christmas dinner. Um, I don't really have any particular favourite, if I'm honest with you. I try. There's so many different varieties of carrots that 
it becomes a bit of a minefield. But the seeds are going to be sowing next week are a variety called Amsterdam Forcing 2. Now, the packet actually says they can be sown in January to May. And I've tried these in the past. People have told me you can sow them in November and things like that. I've tried them in the past and they've never really proven great for that. But we're going to give it a try. We'll sow them in December. We'll sow them in January just to see how they do get on. These will probably be growing in my uh, veggie pod, to be honest with you. Now, um, I've only chosen those because of the fact that they claim to be able to sow in January. And I'm, I'm going to be intrigued if they actually do. But I don't really have any particular favourite. Uh, so over to you guys to let me know what your favourites are. Let us know why as well. Kate says, I grew fenugreek like chickpeas and the smell was amazing. Smells just like maple syrup. Fenugreek is actually what I'm sending out next month, I find, in January, if I remember correctly. Um, otherwise known as meti as well in India. So if you have a meti curry, it's often using that, as uh, I was told. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I sowed a small tray of old cabbage seeds from microgreens today on the kitchen paper. Excellent. I do love growing microgreens, especially at this time of year. Uh, Digwell says, sent Valerie carrots for me, plus any of the Nantes type. I know they are quite a popular one. I grow them from time to time. Um, and uh, Digwell says, Nantes as well. Uh, why do you... Why, why, why do you grow those particular St. Valerie and Nantes? Let us know. Steve said, carrots this year, I had trouble with them germinated. Ended up sowing at least three times until success. They were all Nantes types, different packets. Sometimes it's just too cold um, for them. They are a bit funny, aren't they? As I said before, I try and sow them thickly. Carrots, Sweet Candle and Autumn King 2. Good choice there, actually, Autumn King 2. They're nice big carrot aren't they ready in the autumn steve says have had success with rainbow carrots in the past we'll do grow them next year uh yeah rainbow carrots we've grown rainbow carrots as I said earlier we've grown rainbow carrots this year in a big pot i'm probably going to let those take those down in your lot and let them flower but they have done really really well i think i set those out as for members of the supporters pack um i mean, a good one there Bally Cillian says, Norwich and giant red carrots. They just seem to grow really well in my area. I, it, you've hit a good point, really well in my area, because I do think different carrots, different varieties do best in different areas and different conditions that might be more tailored to your own. Um, but yeah, I don't particularly have any favourites. So yeah, Anna Jane says I've tried resistor fly, but it didn't make much difference to carrot fly. So I just grow my favourite autumn king. Yeah, again, carrot fly. I know a lot of people have trouble with, and I personally don't. There is, I don't know if it's true or not, but apparently, if you grow them up high, the carrot fly can't reach them. I believe that's also been debunked. Um, but I think EnviroMesh overloom is a big thing. And also when you harvest them, harvest them late in the evening or early in the morning so that the smell doesn't attract the fly and then water them straight after is meant to help. Again, I'm only going by what I've heard because I don't have many problems with it. Uh, Idaho says, I don't have carrot root fly. I have pocket gophers. I say 12, row, 12 inch row of carrots. Gophers had a heyday. I got two nice carrots and two half nibbled. The rest were totally trash or just missing. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, yeah. Often often hear of the problems with gophers you have, haven't you? It's, it's a tricky one, that. Anne says, I like witches' fingers for the different colours. A bit like the rainbow fingers, I guess. In But what colours do the witches' fingers produce? Digrat says, St. Valerie, nice taste, long and thick, more carrot for your buck. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we want to hit. Turbo Stream says, the badgers get to the carrots before the plot holders on our site. Defense, big defense. Um, again, my thought is, as I, with the, um, what am I thinking of? Somebody help me. The, the sweet corn problems we used to have, I just found that they work best in a, 
uh, in in big boxes where the badgers couldn't get to them. Uh, Graham says, Sweet Candle and Autumn King for me. A lot of people are going for the Autumn King and the Sweet Candle tonight, aren't you? Uh, good stuff, good stuff. Kate says, Idaho, for the gophers, could you create almost like an underground cage with wires fencing and fill with fret with sand and soil? Um, well, ask Idaho, could you create an underground cage with wires to prevent the gophers? Nigel says insect mesh, EnviroMesh trade name, needs to be ultra fine mesh. Carrots can get through our standard mesh. I found out the hard way. Yes, yes, insect mesh, yes. It, uh, EnviroMesh seems to be the name that sticks, isn't it? It's a bit like Hoover when it comes to vacuum cleaners and things like that. EnviroMesh just seems to stick. Uh, Autumn King, Afanel, and Chantenay for summer. Chantenay, that's a good one, actually. I quite like Chantenay. I'm definitely uh, definitely d developing a taste for these carrots in, in what have you. Andrew says, on the other hand, Idaho Garden Girl, perhaps you provide a diversion to keep those damn gophers off the rest of your garden. I like your thinking there, I'm Andrew. Bethan says, I grow whatever varieties you send in your supporters pack. Amsterdam, Forsen, Nantes, and Rainbows have done well for me. I also brought Eskimo, as they were great. I looked at Eskimo in the past. Um, I never got around to getting those. But yeah, Amsterdam, Forsen, and Antis, and Rainbow, I've all sent out. We were, we're changing the suppliers at the moment for the seeds, so we're getting more and more choices now. So look out for different varieties in the future. Idaho says, yes, Kate, I'm, do, I'm doing my raised bed in 2024. I'm redoing, sorry, in 2024. And we'll line the bottom with a quarter or half inch grid rabbit wire. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Uh, Digla says, I'll try sweet candle again if I find a decent supplier. My last two years yields have been very, very poor. Yeah. Um, I do think, you know... I do think a lot of it is down to the, each conditions, and certain seeds will do better wherever you are. Which is things were red, yellow, and orange. My niece loved them. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Kate says the uh, Oxart carrots grew huge and tasted amazing. I think I remember you talking about these actually. Uh, sand soil mix and insect mesh cover. Fantastic. Andrew says problem with badgers. How about wild pigs? You don't want to be near a gang of them while they are rummaging through your sweet corn. Your badgers are pretty lethal, to be fair. They're like mini bears. Excuse me. Um, they are pretty lethal. Uh, Idaho says, I don't know how much of a diversion the carrots were. The gophers made their way through the squash, tomatoes, cucumber, and kale, etc. Excellent stuff. Mud Nigel says, for me, growing in tanks and giving protection against the rain, I hope to keep my carrots well into March. I think we're going to do that here, funnily enough, because our carrots are still looking really, really healthy. They're showing absolutely no signs of dying down. I think, and I don't know if anybody's going to agree with me on this, but I find with carrots, the key to getting good carrots is obviously to remember to thin them as regularly as possible. I, well, I tend to do, I sow them quite thickly. And when they come up, as soon as they are, are coming up, I start to thin them out. But I like to just give them just enough room to grow and then I'll thin them out more so that I can still eat the ones that I'm thinning out. Uh, it does make some nice, nice carrots, I find. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I don't grow carrots anyway. You're bad for 19p at Christmas last meat all year in the freezer. So I, I get what you're saying, Ed, uh, Ed buddy. Uh, 19p for a bag of carrots is pretty cheap. Um, and sounds like you don't eat many carrots. But what I would say about those ones for 19p, they don't have the flavor that we get from our homegrown varieties. Um my opinion on that, I'll be honest with you, but that is my opinion. Right, guys. So what um anybody got anything else they want to ask anybody else about um these uh blah, 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 these root vegetables? Anybody got any questions or anything they would like to add? Let us know in the comments. In the meantime. I've got some photos to go through. Now, the photo sent in went a little bit low, which isn't surprising because it's been so wet and damp 
we are struggling to try and do anything. Uh, I certainly am, and and what have you. Um, so let's have a look at the photos that I have got. This first photo came in from Digrow or Steve. He's moved his chilies indoors. Oh my God, what a load of chilies are still on those plants. Look really, really healthy and really, really good. But I do believe he was saying he was having trouble getting in the front door because they were all in the way. Uh, and in the final photo, last week, Kerry joined us and she said about her school greenhouse. Now, this is the greenhouse she has in her school. It is huge looking at this picture. That's a greenhouse and a half. So very, very impressed with that. But added to that, and I'll come out of that one, we also do have a, a, a Greg said last week about the conversation um, started about putting a raised chicken run in or something along the lines of that and greg said that he had done that himself and he sent in these photos of it to me and what well, i mean lovely photo this one and the chickens particularly look rather rather happy there um but this is what we've gone on to see uh, you know raised chickens getting those chickens off the ground when it's wet and boggy it looks fantastic uh, this is what it looks like when completed. That's, I mean, that's almost like a, a decking to lay out in the sun on, isn't it? It's fantastic. Uh, a bit of a edging around it and so on. And this is with their run on top as well, or their coop as well, to keep them off out of the ground. He did add sand, and he said the sand was a bit of a mistake. But I like it. I like it a lot. This is what he was doing during the build as well. So you got the idea, uh, I hope, of what that was all about. Just getting those chickens off the ground and give them a bit of a chance. Uh, right, where were we with the comments? Um, where was I? Where was I? Uh, did I read this one? For me, growing in tanks and giving... A, oh, yes, I have read that one out. What about this one? Uh, yeah, read that one out. So I think... Here we were. Nigel says to Digra, I used DTB in King Seeds last year with good germination. Yeah, yeah. There's plenty of suppliers out there. Um, I think sometimes when they're in garden centres, they can be on the shelf for quite a while, which can be a bit of a problem. Plus, if you've ever been in a garden centre when it's in the middle of the night, it is bloody cold in those things as well, which I don't think helps with looking after the seeds. Digwell says, all carrots come from one of the families, Nantes, Imper Imperator, Chatonet, Daveners, plus the mini round ones. Yeah. Oh, mini round ones. Got to grow more of those next year, I think. Graham says, my late sown carrots had the tops eaten by slugs this year, but were still okay to use after I cut the tops off before cooking i think uh you can turn the the foliage into like a pesto i believe as well if that's any use to anybody i've yet to do it myself but somebody did say i think it was stuart you can do that uh time stream agree about the flavor i tend to roast them for my christmas dinner yummy looking forward to christmas dinner i have to say uh digra says my dtb are rubbish dtb what's dtb uh no, it's gone. What's DTB? Uh, I think mine were near about three to five centimetres high. Yeah, I think that's probably about the same place I start to thin mine. But I do try and leave more than what I probably should in, in that I thin them as we go throughout as well. Just trying to leave a few in to, to grow and use the thinnings to eat as, at the same time. Uh, Idaho says, your chilies look amazing to dig well. Uh, Dabo String, dig, dig well's chilies are hot. Uh, Anne says, our summers are short. What are the root vegetables with the quickest growing time? Radish. Got to be radish. Six weeks. Uh, do find with radish you need to harvest them, um, to keep them well watered, keep them really well watered, and harvest them when they are young for when they taste best. But radish is by far the quickest. Turnips are pretty quick as well. Kohlrabi too. Um, 
Um, anybody else got any other suggestion for quick root vegetables? I, of the three I've just said are what I can think of. Kate says, looks like a play palace for those chicks. The house we have made an off one has space, I think, for chicks, and I'm so excited. Oh, that is going to be great, Kate. I really cannot wait to see what you do. A belly scene says, I always noticed bring veg home from supermarket, and the next day your car is no different. Uh, I always noticed bring veg home from supermarket, and the next day your carrot is no different. But bring from home, bring the home from the allotment, and you can still smell the scents for that. You're right, yes, with you, yes. Um, the, the smell, yeah, smell from carrots is just delicious, isn't it? Uh, fantastic chicken platform. They will be happy girls. <coughs> Digwell says DT Brown Seed Supplier. Right, thank you. If I think it was, yeah, thank you. Uh, DTB, yeah, with you now. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Idaho says to Anna, I think it would be radish for the fastest root crops. Uh, so anybody has got any questions or any other suggestions for Anne over in Canada with the lot short summers? Now, I do need a mission for next week if anybody has any ideas for that. But the subject I want to talk about next week, uh, of course, if you guys are happy to go with this, is how do you keep your gardening motivation going um, during this sort of December period because I think I, a few people I've spoken to are finding it a real struggle this year and this is something that has been bothering me every weekend it seems to rain and December my weekends are pretty full at the moment the allotment I'm still trying to get down to the allotment still trying to get down to the or out in the garden but it doesn't feel like I'm doing as much as I would like of course it's good that I have other things about in um in the in my life going on as of course but my garden is my happy space and i'm finding it really hard just to find the motivate not the motivation um, the motivation is there it's the weather is letting me down but what what do you do i want to talk about that next week is my thoughts uh anybody if you're happy with that let us know digrell says how about parsley root grew it in 2022 very nice um is that a quick growing one i've never grown it myself so uh is there a video on you growing it as well and so thanks i'll try turnips next year let us know how you get on uh, i'm not a lover of turnips as i said earlier but they do they are they are pretty quick uh what is parsnip parsley root i think that uh, is meant to be um good question what is parsley root what is interesting? Uh, Idaho says, interesting, Digwell. Maybe I will try a parsley root. Of course, if you can get that over in your area. Love that. Uh, Digwell says, no, not quick. Just one not mentioned. Uh, Digwell, tell us a bit more about parsley root. I think actually, and I grew Hamburg parsley once. The tops were fine, but the slugs mauled the roots. Interesting. Um, is Hamburg and parsley root the same thing? I wonder. I think it's going to be. I think it is. I've heard of Hamburg parsley, so I know what you're talking about there. Um, is it like a perpetual, per, perpetual or a, a perennial parsley? I'm not sure. Um, happy to go with the motivation subject next week. Uh, Digra says same thing, so good stuff. Um, Turbo stream happy for part motivation next week. I think that's going to be a good one. And says never heard of parsley root. Thanks, Digwell. Um, yeah, so same thing as Hamburg, Hamburg parsley. So I have heard of Hamburg parsley more than I've heard of parsley root. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to try that next year. Is that more? Is it a vegetable or a herb? A vegetable or a herb let me know in the comments it would be be great, good to know uh digwa says parsley root is what celeriac is to celery and it's still commonly used in northern germany hence the name hamburg parsley uh, interesting interesting 
Uh, we did touch on celeriac earlier, didn't we? Um, oh, Digra says it's a root vegetable. Okay, okay, excellent. I'm going to have to try that next year. I'm coming up with lists of things I want to try next year. Oh, all good fun, isn't it? All good fun. Now, it, in two weeks' time, it's going to be Christmas Eve as well. So we're going to be having our yearly quiz night which is going to be a lot of fun on christmas eve uh week after that of course it's going to be our new year's eve party so it's just a chance it's just gonna be a free for we're not going to have any subject i'm just going to ask you all some questions in order to get to know you all a little bit better on new year's eve um, at this point, I've just seen somebody on Facebook has given us a, a thumbs up as well, which just remind me, don't forget to please give us a like, please give us a thumbs up, please give us a follow, please give us a subscribe, and don't forget to click the notifications so that you know when we go live. Always good to hear and uh, see that. Uh, Margaret says, did you get the quiz? Yes, sorry, I meant to give you a call. I did get it, I think. Um, I, I'll, I'll give you a call as well. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure I've got it. Uh, Anna Jones says, it looks like a parsnip, talking about Hamburg parsley. Excellent, excellent stuff. Um, so I still need a mission, a challenge for you to set me for next week. Something a bit fun. Um, Ideally, something I can do quickly because I've got a busy weekend next weekend. But, of course, it's up to you what you want me to do. Uh, parsley roots are pale, creamy white like a parsnip, but less yellow and thin like and slender like a carrot. Excellent stuff. Uh, Digwell says they lack the woody part to their roots that large parsnips have been tender all the way up like a carrot. They taste predominantly of parsley, but also of celeriac and parsnip. Fantastic. Fantastic. Absolutely. I'm going to give that a try next year and see what we can do. Coming up with some good stuff for next, next year, to say the least. Right. Um, so next week, motivation, we're going to sow these carrots and see how they get on. I need a mission. I need a mission from you guys as well. Uh, so when it comes to root vegetables, have we answered all your questions? Has anybody else got anything else they want to ask or anything else they want to, to throw in there? Um, Hargrave Gas says, a challenge, make a Christmas root vegetable soup. That's okay with anybody else. Everybody else, that sounds like a good one. Uh, Christmas root vegetables to soup. And says this podcast keeps me motivated, very inspiring while my garden is buried in snow. Well, next week, that's exactly what we want to hear more of. Um, those sort of stories and how we, we get motivated. Uh, Time Extreme says, Mission, make parsnip and potato soup. So, this soup, yeah, I think this 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 Christmas soup or winter soup, um, I think this is going to be what we're going to be doing for the mission. I like it. I like it, guys, when you set me these sort of missions that I can just have a bit of fun with and try and do. They always do go down well as well. Really like the one we did yesterday going in the garden centre. The trouble with the garden centre um, – was that <laughs> I was there? Well, we got there about four o'clock, it closed at five, and we were there for something in, in, at the same time. Literally, they were like kicking us out at five to five. We didn't like that at all. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, so Digwell says, Yes, it is soup season. Uh, yes, root soup. Uh, soup sounds like the set consensus, indeed. It, is Idaho's thumbs up and Turbo Stream says soups you so yeah we will do the soup for next week excellent we actually got everything figured out for next week for once and that's nice and early right so then let's recap on these root vegetables so the general consensus from what I'm getting from everyone is that we all pretty much grow all the same roots radishes parsnip and parsnips uh parsnips uh, turnips, kohlrabi, celeriac, and so on. 
and it seems to be that they are all very very popular with you all so good stuff good stuff um the biggest i think slayer somebody anna if i remember correctly had trouble i'm hoping we've solved that for her uh root fly can be a bit of a problem with carrots which i'm hoping we've sort of solved as well and the potato the choices of potatoes you all came out with some really really good choices of potatoes as well which is really really good and inspiring to hear a uh, quick question before you go where do you get your potatoes from your seed potatoes from um just as we are finishing up i thought that might be a nice thing to finish graham says love leek and potato soup with crusty bread served covered in butter obviously yeah leek and potato soup i can make that um i love it love it and nigel says leek potato and celery soup we've been having it for the past four weeks i made uh, there's a video coming out if i get it edited of course i've made shark fin melon soup today um interesting is all i will say on that um wait for the video and you'll see what happens that amanda actually comes into that video too Bethan says, I'm not surprised. I watched your video on harvesting celery this week. I expect you'll be eating it for the next four weeks too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wilco was always my seed potato sauce, says Hargrave Gas. Absolutely. It's such a shame. JBA in Scotland for my seed potatoes, online ordering. Uh, so I got my last seed potatoes from a garden centre. And Bally Cillian, patch potato excuse me patch potato seed merchant in northern ireland oh, excuse me must be tricky over in northern ireland with uh wait well, how are I, I know we get to the end but how are things in northern ireland are they getting better when it comes to seeds and and things like that now um i don't I, I'd, I'd love to I'd love to know love to know uh brian says always bought seed spuds from certified dealer in the past from now on i'm saving them as they are too dear i've always brought my seed potatoes from garden center i would go along and you get those buckets you fill up and then you pay for the bucket but this year as i said i'm trying to save my own seed to see if it can be more success i know since i have a couple of sources for seed potatoes local organic nursery or two mail order companies to get unusual varieties uh nigel says to beth and same ingredients plus turkey in two weeks time <laughs> yeah two weeks time two weeks to christmas guys two shows until the big man turns up and we enjoy our christmas day looking forward to it i don't know about you but i'm looking forward to it uh Digwell says, I use Bridge Egg Garden Centre in five for my seed spuds. £2.20 a kilo and cheap shipping. I, I, yeah. I'll have to check those out and see if we can order from there as well. Uh, Ballysin says, I was asking about what it's like with seeds in Northern Ireland. Not really, but found a couple, not the main companies. It's a shame. Right, guys, it is half past seven. We have done everything that we needed to go through. So it is time now to close up the shed, head on in and get a nice hot cup of cocoa before retiring to bed hope you've all enjoyed it it's been really good chatting to you guys again about root vegetables hope we've always covered everything everyone wants to know um it's always a subject we can come back to in the future if anybody has any more questions or anything else like that in the future um uh, we've worked out the shows for the rest of the year now but i think in 2024 we're going to really, I really want to build on this and, and get you guys the topics you want to talk about uh, real died, dialed down and, and really get into it. So 2024, we're still going to be going and making it bigger and better. Anyway, you get the idea. Thanks so much for joining me on this lovely Sunday evening. We will be back again next Sunday at 6 p.m. So until then, please take care. <laughs>